Hi everyone, I am so excited to see you. It is not a coincidence that you and I are sharing this moment right now. Do you know I've been working as a medium for over 25 years and my eyes are so wide open right now and focused on this deep inner need of an awakening. Like life is consciously connecting to all that is. So I've decided to create the Lighter Side Network where each show and each host reminds us how the everyday meets the extraordinary. Be it in the realm of mindfulness and healthy living, having an empowered and authentic life with humor, trusting your intuition and communicating with the beyond, energy healing and releasing unconscious obstacles, astrology, living in your joy and truth, and so much more. Join us as we share our knowledge and experiences with you. We're gonna have so much fun. Hi everybody, my name is Laura Boone. Hi, my name is Ursula Lentini. Hey everyone, I'm Thurston Patel. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Karin. Join me on my show. Are you ready? Only on the Lighter Side Network. Only on the Lighter Side Network. The Lighter Side Network, where the everyday meets the extraordinary. I'm so excited about the show today. And I have my sister here. Yes, that's right. Yes. I've got another Boone on the set. <laughs> Jenny Boone Bethel. I'm Hi. so happy to be here. I'm so glad Thanks you're for here. Having me. It's so fun. Yes. We um we talked about how we were gonna do this show and what we were gonna do in the show. And we just decided we we're gonna do what we do in private, which is just gush over all of our crystals. Gush is a good word, or so, obsession. Gush. We're going to gush. Gush and goo. Gush and goo. Um, we, we are obsessed with crystals. We collect crystals. We talk about crystals. We have friends that collect crystals. And this is just a small sampling of, of our collection. <laughs> Your husband's been very tolerant. The key word there is small sampling. <laughs> Because that is exactly what that is. It's actually fairly minuscule. <laughs> so what we're going to do today is talk about some of our favorite crystals. We're going to talk about, I'm going to ask Jenny how she got into collecting crystals and I can talk about it too, but I think her story is really interesting. And then we're going to talk about really just from a spiritual or metaphysical sense, what these crystals mean and what they mean to us and how you can use them and maybe show you some crystals that aren't as common. I mean, we've got a couple of common crystals here. I see two mm -hmm. that are common. The rest are not very common. So maybe we can expose you to some specimens as they're called. I love that. That uh, maybe you haven't seen before. So with that, Jenny, tell yes. me how you got turned on to start collecting crystals. I mean, I know the story, mm -hmm. but tell them the story. I love the story because it very much involves you. Um, I don't know how many, several years ago, I don't know exactly how long ago, I was at your house, and at the time, um, there was a dish of spheres and maybe six or seven different spheres in this one little bowl in your house um i will tell you since then it has exploded <laughs> exponentially I have shelves and <clears throat> shelves and by the way my sister <clears throat> um is getting more and more into the metaphysical world and getting more in touch with by the way her abilities and i i love to out people on the show <laughs> without asking them ahead of time awesome. surprise Yes, my sister has abilities. We can even talk about that a little bit later because I bet some of the people that watch the show that know about me, they'd like to know a little oh, wow. bit about that. But we'll... And I'm just learning about that too. Yes, so. she's just learning about that. But I just want to say, Jenny, I mean, you, had, you didn't know the first thing about this. No. In fact, I saw the bowl on your coffee table and I just had to pick them up. I was completely drawn, almost like a magnet, and... I had to pick them up and hold them, and I loved, you know, putting one down and picking up the next one. 
And so I asked you, what in the world are these? These are the most beautiful things that I had ever seen. I'd never seen them, especially not in that form. I've seen geodes and, um, because they are decorative. They are. Um, and that more or less started it in one of your trips with your friend, um, your dear friend to North Carolina. I asked you to get me a starter set. A starter set. A that's starter right. A starter set. And so that's exactly <laughs> what you did. And then immediately when I, when I had them in my own house, I had to read about them. And um, it, it's, it's really unusual to think. I was just drawn to them. I feel like they pull me in. And I still to this day when we've been to different gym and mineral shows together, you feel almost magnetized towards them. And when you pick them up, it, it does somewhat affect you. At least that's my experience. And so I know the ones that I'm drawn to. And then I, I'll... I'll usually buy them and add them to my collection and then I'll quickly go and read about them and then when I read about them I go that's oh, why that's why that makes sense that's what I need right now or that's kind of what's going on in my life right now and so I well do. and I think <clears throat> what Jenny's talking about is so important I kind of want to say it out loud people get really people come to me because they know I collect crystals and I work with crystals and I love crystals and they they said well what do I need to do for this and what are the best things to buy and why do I need, you know, how do I use this? And, and, and actually Jamie and I have done shows on gridding and things like that. So there is a lot of knowledge around uh, ritual and practice with crystals. Mm -hmm. But honestly, you guys, you don't need to know a thing about them no. to have a relationship with them, to know how you're drawn to them, to know how they can help you. So there should be, and please eliminate if there is, any intimidation whatsoever Absolutely. about crystals. Because it really is about a relationship with right. the energy of That's the crystal. very true. Right? Very so true. So it kind of snuck up on you. Well, it did. And I think initially it was just because I loved how they felt. The polished spheres specifically have since expanded into all different forms and of the crystals themselves. But um, I think it's... Uh, it, it's almost, some people, we talked about this, some people collect paintings, some people collect, you know, other, all kinds of things, and this is what we collect, what I collect. Um, it's kind of my uh, art, I guess. I, I do think of it as, as art, so it can be that alone, mm -hmm. um, and not necessarily have to delve deeper into some of the meanings and or uses, mm -hmm. um, physically, metaphysically, etc. The theory... There obviously is a lot of science around what these stones are, Ge geology, geological science around it. And we're not going to really talk about that today. We're going to, you know, the theory behind this metaphysically, but it kind of morphs with the science, is that all of these stones or minerals are either conglomerations of certain types of minerals or they're a pure mineral. All of these are different elements and molecular makeups. That's what creates these stones. So there is science behind that, but the theory behind it metaphysically is that you know we all are made of energy and we all are composed of different combinations just like these stones and that everything in the natural world has its own energy. It has its own... Um, Properties. Energy signature, if you will. Mm -hmm. And when you start to become sensitive to energy or light energy, in any capacity really, if you start to get around crystals or you start to work with crystals, you start to notice that they have different energies. Absolutely. And then once you, and again, you don't have to know a thing about that to have your own experience with a crystal. And I know that sounds woo-woo, you know, like it's not woo-woo, it's true-true. Jamie talks about this, but you don't have to know a thing. And once you have that first experience, it sort of opens up this whole language for you or experience for you, I think. Completely. So that's how we're going to talk about <clears throat> these today. And then, of course, there's a whole body of work that people have recorded really over centuries you guys about stones and their energy and their relation and humans relationships to crystals and i want to 
before we get started in detail, I want to talk about a couple of resources that I think are really wonderful if you are just starting to work with crystals or get to know crystals or collect crystals. One book is called The Crystal Bible by Judy Hall. This is a great starter book and you can get this on Amazon. You can get it in most metaphysical bookstores. And there are actually three volumes of this book. It's one of my favorites. The reason I love this book, you guys, is that if you don't know a thing about crystals, you can literally look up pink stones <laughs> in the back and then you can, you know, it shows you pictures of stones and it's sort of a cliff notes, if you will, right. with color references of the stones and it tells you where the stones are from. It tells you... Short and sweet. It's short and sweet and easy to navigate. So... Crystal Bible, Judy Hall. The other great book, I don't want to call this advanced, but it's got a lot more depth to it. And this is a great companion book to a lot of these shorter Cliff Note books. This is by a total tree hugger called Melody. Her name's Melody. <laughs> I think this was written in the 70s, you guys. But, you know, yes, this is woo-woo. But this literally... <laughs> The knowledge in this book, this is the quintessential crystal Bible. I mean, I've read about this with a lot of people go to this reference book. There is no, there's not a picture in this book, but it gets really in depth. And whenever I can't find a crystal online or in one of these Cliff Note type books, Melody one. is on it. And she has um, researched it. it. She has a lot of history about the stones in here. So it's, it's a really great reference book. Okay, so let's get Yay. into talking about some of these gorgeous stones. Which one, Jenny? I, some of these are mine, some of these are yours. I know which one I would really what love do you to start, start with, with. Because it's, it's my biggest obsession of the moment right now. Um, it's funny because I fluctuate in between the ones, even in my own collection, that I'm feeling more drawn to than others. Um, and by the way, all the ones that I brought are the ones that I'm most drawn to right now. But I'm going to pick this one up first because I'm just completely fascinated by this. I love that. This is called Scolocyte. Um, it's also can be referred to as the Stone of Light Workers. But I just absolutely love to hold the stone. There's something so uh, tranquil and calming about it it's just milky white and i don't know if you can get the camera close enough to see that as you it's the only stone that i have found that i have um that as you turn it in the light it changes and i'm just it has a lot of depth too it's almost like you can see through it exactly it's really interesting exactly but it also comes in different forms i'll show you this one too because i love the eggs they, they're so fun to hold in your hands um, I don't know if you can see how the light affects that too, but this is um, probably one of my favorites at the moment. Um, in the natural, in the natural <clears throat> form, this guy's literally looks like a porcupine. It's like got all these tiny, almost like needles, which is what gives it that the lines, yeah, the yeah. linear aspect. So when they of polish that, it, it looks incredible. totally different. Um, right, but I do, I do love the scolocyte. Um, this is also really good for. Um, opening up your heart and communication from that aspect because um, it deepens your uh, relationships and your ability to express love, um, which I love. It's just everything, this is everything calm and serene and tranquil. And so, so it's calming. Yeah. So it's good for stress. Yes, absolutely. Um, and it also can sharpen your awareness to your, uh, intuition the, the the subtle messages inside of yourself mm -hmm. so everything about it is just it's um subtle and tranquil and calming and creates a deep sense of inner peace and i think right now that's just important in my life well white is every color and and just a note you guys because i know jamie especially <laughs> is like a color expert and she's done check out her show the lighter side because she's got two or three shows now in the catalog about color and the spiritual aspect of color it totally overlaps with this you guys like these stones the colors actually you know have that same kind of wisdom and knowledge behind it and mm -hmm. white is such a 
high, 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 high vibration. Mm -hmm. Anytime you have white, it's it's a real calming, high this vibration. Is an incredibly high vibration in crystal for sure, definitely. So that's scolocyte. Love, yay, I have love. Not as common. I mean, it's actually, it's pretty easy. Actually, this is found in a lot of places around the world. Predominantly it's in India. It's not expensive. India is the really? main source of scolocyte, but it's also found out west in California and the United mm -hmm. States and in Brazil. I don't Brazil's see this in stores a lot, but when you do find it, it's not that expensive. No, it's yeah, really it's not. It's affordable. It's re very reasonable. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and I do kind of like to tie in, um, a lot of these stones are connected with different chakras Yes. Um, in our own energy fields. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of them overlap with different mm -hmm. chakras, but mm -hmm. Scolocyte's main chakra is the heart, mm. the heart chakra. That is so interesting because we did not talk about, guys, the stones we were bringing today. And mm -hmm. almost all of mine are heart chakra stones. Wow. So I guess that's what we're wow. going to be about today, mm -hmm. which I love. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, mm -hmm. what's next? Oh my, let's see. Um, probably the in Infinity Stone. <sighs> okay. This, I love this one so much. It's incredible. It really is. I mean, the depth of this stone... This was a gift from my crystal sister <laughs> recently. So I'm really still getting to know this one. Um, I had such a reaction to it when she gave it to me for my birthday in the winter. Um, and again, when I took it home and looked at it in the light and then immediately looked it up, I realized why she'd given it to me. Um, this is known as the Healer Stone. It is an incredibly powerful but gentle and angelic energy stone, um, which is definitely kind of how it feels. Um, it's a combination of serpentine and another uh, crystal chrysotile. I don't know a whole lot about chrysotile, but I've seen serpentine. Serpentine is more commonly. Serpentine is this kind of light green color, typically, whenever, or it's yellow green. I've seen serpentine yellow green, okay. and I've seen it light green. And I've seen um, serpentine is really a powerful stone, but it, it mixes with other stones. There's a really great stone <clears throat> called atlantisite that's pretty mm -hmm. rare, and it's serpentine with stictite, which is little purple specks. Yeah. I had never seen this before, though. I hadn't either. I, this was from India, as I recall. The, um, where the dealer I got this from was from India. Mm -hmm. Did you find that that where does that come from in the world? Um, South Africa India. and Brazil, um, but India as well. I mean, yeah. a lot of these are found all over the world. Um, but it is it is incredible. This is um, one of the strongest stones to aid in spiritual and energetic healing. So if you're a Reiki practitioner, um, among other things, this is a perfect stone. For to that help purpose. with that, mm -hmm. to so aid in that, wouldn't a stone like that typically need to be cleaned and like talk about what that means? Absolutely. Is that a well, another and another point um, to to go back just briefly is um, when we've purchased or found crystals and taken them home, we've what you wash you want to wash them um, and. Really what that does is uh, cleans the crystal, kind of hits the reset button, and it becomes yours, more or less, um, in your home and in your life and in your energetic um, field. So, so you can clean stones by holding them and meditating to have them cleaned, or they, some people call it charging a stone when you do that, but also um, literally washing them with water, and you set your intention while you wash them, but... Guys, some stones don't wash with water. Selenite, any salt-based stones. Salt you need to check before you wash mm -hmm. your stones. If you're not that familiar with stones, don't wash it with water. Like all these are safe to wash with water, but selenite's a prime example. Um, it'll like salt, it'll dissolve in your hand. I'd hate for people to get mad at us. Right. When they said, I put my stone under the water and it dissolved. Um, so don't do that. No. But the other thing that... I do with my stones you can put them in the sunlight that's a great way mm -hmm. to clean them now 
colored stones in the sunlight can fade your stone or not be so good for it. So you just do it for a brief time, put it in direct sunlight and then remove it. But the other really great thing to do, you guys, is, I mean, this sounds so witchy, right? But full moon, I put... This was new to me. You just told me that the other day. Oh, yeah. And people who, some, a lot of people will know great. about this. I have a big table outside my bedroom and when there's a full moon, I get so excited and there's no clouds and all my stones get a moon bath. Like I just outed myself and some little weird stuff that I do, but <laughs> they love it. It's, it's they, they absorb the, the moonlight. So anyway, I'm sorry, I'm getting off track, but I just wanted to add some of that to the discussion. So infinity serpentine is what that's called. Infinity serpentine or just the infinity stone, the infinite stone. Um, again, it's just incredibly powerful. And then different, you know, a lot of times I'll just jump online to a site that I've gone to before to read a blurb about how to wash it or charge it. Um, and this one is such a powerful um, high vibrate. Again, the higher vibrations, the more they absorb. Mm. So you do want to clean them or charge them. So more scolocyte frequently. too. Yes, scolocyte too. And there are others too with that higher vibration. Um, but this is incredibly powerful so I've read and again I'm just kind of getting to know that um but it's a, it's an incredible stone also for um kind of opening up someone to uh exploring their psychic abilities mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. someone who's kind of scratching the surface of that or interested in more of that that's a good one for that purpose so, as well so like an opposite stone to this which we don't have on the table is black tourmaline Black tourmaline. Yeah, black tourmaline. And I That's talk great. about black tourmaline all the time, and it's very <laughs> common. But, I mean, everybody needs some black tourmaline in their home. Jamie and I did a show. We gridded with black tourmaline. But black tourmaline, I mean, every stone could use cleaning, but black tourmaline is almost just never needs cleaning. It's just such a hearty, um, I call it like a spiritual air filter. Vacuum cleaner. Yeah, it's not a high <laughs> vibration. It's actually a low vibration, and it just sort of, sucks all the low vibrations to it which is why it's such a good grounding mm -hmm. stone these are not grounding mm -hmm. stones by the way no at all no. so this is we'll like talk about you're one grounded one. with your black tourmaline right you kind of need to <clears throat> clean and ground and then you kind of go amp it up amp it up <laughs> <laughs> with these exactly which is why they need cleaning right it's right. different it's a different vibration right so jenny we just talked about the black tourmaline. Mm -hmm. A good segue to that would be that gorgeous cube. Yes. That seems really simple, but it's not. It's really special. Oh, it's really, really special. Really and special. What, the first thing that will surprise you about shungite is its weight. How light. Because it looks so dense and so solid that when you pick it up, you're, you're kind of bracing for it, but it's actually much lighter than, than you would think. This is... Um, also referred to as the miracle stone, yeah. and it's pretty rare. It's it's rare. It's it's. I've only read that it's found in Russia. That's right. Um, in one mine. In one mine in Russia. Mm -hmm. So it's extremely rare. It's also extremely old, over two billion years old. Crazy. <clears throat> Which is amazing. It's more expensive. It's harder to find. That's a huge piece of shungite. This by the way. Is. And I just nice. like the square too. Mm -hmm. I love the shape that they polish this one into. Um, Definitely one that everyone should have. Right. I have this in my uh, little cosmetic bag in my purse. I yes. have it. By, I have this by my computer at my desk at home, um, in my car, mm -hmm. as well. Uh, it's a it's a purifier. Um, Geomagnetic a, stress. Yes. This completely all the the earth energy. Again. Sometimes you can just look at the color of these stones and you can understand kind of what family they're in. They're That's all true. different, but you know, like the black tourmaline, this is like it it cleans, especially people use this with, you know, all the cell phone radiation, right. all of those um types of irritants or stresses that are on us. This cleans. It's great to put by a computer right. like you have it. Right. Any kind of machinery or equipment. It is. It is. And it's interesting when I read, when I try to read the chakra that a stone might be in more connection with, this one's all of them. Wow. All of them. It's just that cleansing um, energetically. Well, it's like white. White and black are every oh color. God, the same. They're every color. 
Okay, so yes, let's talk about this one. This, you guys, is going to shock you because we're used to seeing this mineral in a different form, but this is actually emerald. It's amazing. It's emerald. So this is not gem quality emerald, obviously. It's really cloudy, but this is emerald, and this is actually how emeralds grow. And I'm not sure what they grow in. It looks like a granite, but don't quote me on that. But um, a gemstone quality emerald would grow on a matrix like this, but it would obviously be clear, and it's a lot more rare. But emerald's actually very prevalent. It's not a rare stone. The gem quality of emerald is a very rare stone. But emerald is, you know, again, if you know anything about chakras, it's green and it's the heart chakra. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people use emeralds, especially for relationships. And the thing that is a subtle difference, I mean, obviously, um, green stones open your heart chakra and they help you be more receptive to love, to receive and give love. The little twist, and, and emeralds do that, but the little twist that emeralds bring to this is longevity and staying power and the intention and commitment that goes along with love. So this is a very big marriage stone. Mm. This is a great wedding gift, you guys, for anybody getting married is an emerald. And if you can't afford a gemstone quality emerald, you can get something like this. Right. This is very <clears throat> affordable emerald in this sort of matrix so I love this stone another stone I brought today that is sort of along the same lines is seraphonite which I so amazing. I'm kind of obsessed with seraphonite and some of these stones it's they're so detailed and it's almost like you're looking at the landscape of a planet Right. Like you're, or you're flying over a forest. Right, which is mm -hmm, definitely. Some of these just, they just, it's amazing. It's like a little planet or a landscape. Seraphonite is a lot more rare. It's, it's not as rare as a gem, but it is rare. It's mostly found in Russia. It's mostly found in Siberia. This particular piece is from Siberia. But this seraphonite is... Again, it's green, so you start to see the pattern here. It's more about the heart chakra. Mm -hmm. It's more about love. But seraphonite is also about angelic love. Um, it's very much about the higher levels of love and connecting with eternal love or infinite love. So seraphonite is something that people wear a lot in jewelry at their heart. Mm -hmm. So a lot of necklaces are made out of seraphonite. So it just helps you um, keep... In touch with the love of your higher self and it's also a lot about self-love seraphonite so I love this Beautiful. this is something I'm really drawn to right now mm -hmm. and you don't see this all the time I, you see it in little pieces but you don't see it in a, a big form no. like this no so I love what you said about the aerial view with this yes. uh, with the last stone I'm going to talk about Laramar because that's exactly what we said to each other when we came up this upon one the Laramar dealer this was incredible so, um, first of all, I don't have too many that are the, the egg shape. Um, so that kind of pulled me in because I love the, the shape and size of this one. But the way it seems to me is as if you were flying above the Caribbean Sea and here are the islands. And um, this one looks like beaches. It does. Literally. It really, really and does. And volcanoes. And what's interesting, okay, so Laramar is rare. Very. You have some on too. This is Laramar as well. It's very rare <clears throat> and it's found in the Caribbean, mainly Jamaica. Oh, the Dominican. Oh, excuse me. You're right. Dominican no, I, Republic. I made a mistake. Dominican. Yes. Only in the Dominican Republic. Oh, that's the only island. The only, the only place and uh, in fact the mine is um closed oh so gosh. it's just even more rare so than it's we thought so initially. Laramar not that you buy these for investments but the Laramar is it's it, it's going up in value if you have a piece right of it quickly but I love that it looks like where it's from <laughs> it does it's amazing Completely. this is a really gorgeous <clears throat> piece of Laramar and it, this, so it comes in like a geode form, you guys. Isn't that amazing? That's what it looks like rough. 
And then you and open then it up and you polish it and it's like a treasure. It is completely on the inside. so beautiful. Yeah. So what is Laramar? Laramar for? Um, I mean, I, I know what it makes me feel like. It's a stress reliever. And it opens your mind to new ways of thinking and communicating. Um, it's the, embodi the embodiment of sea and sky energies, which I think is incredible because it definitely gives you that at so, first glance. So let's talk about that for a second because I think it's important. So Laramar, you know, I just did a show on Taurus. And, you know, Taurus rules the um, throat chakra. And a lot of people who are Taurus can sing. They have a wonderful voice. But when you just talked about sea and sky, astrologically speaking, what that means is the emotions, which is the sea, the water, and the sky, which is air, is the communication element. So, wow. So the air helps you be able to communicate the emotions, wow. what's on the inside. So when you said it was such a great communication stone. It is. That's wonderful. And then it's blue and it's the throat chakra. So do you see, this is crazy how all this comes together. Well, it really is because that's the, the main chakra that Laramore is. See, and I didn't know that, but I knew that right. because it, it becomes intuitive if right. you start to right. know about all these things. Right. Well, it's an incredible aid in communication and innovation um, as well. It opens your mind to new ways of thinking and then communication on top of that. But that's another favorite. So only right found now. in the Dominican. Only found in the Dominican. Love it. And there's one little mountain range of sorts. I read this just the other day um, where that mine was um, outside of Punta Cana. Wow. I know. Amazing. I know. Amazing. So let's talk about this one. This is one of my favorite things in the whole world. And you know, um, this is called rhodochrysite. It is from Uruguay and Argentina. This particular piece is from Argentina. Most of the mines are from Argentina. Those mines are becoming closed. Mm -hmm. And this is becoming a really rare stone to find. I love the designs of this. It's really gorgeous and it's got layers and it looks Jesse's going to get a close-up of this and I know he's going to put it on the screen for you guys but what's really interesting about this is it's formed in stalactites so this is actually formed by drips so one layer drips and then another layer drips like icicles you guys so that's how this was formed but a lot like rose quartz which many of you that's very prevalent in the world rose quartz mm -hmm. This is another love stone. It's like we brought love stones today. We did. We really did. <laughs> um, this is just a, I don't want, I want to call it a stress reliever, but this is like a butterfly. This is like a happiness stone. Mm -hmm. This is happy stone, a love life stone, a don't worry, be happy stone. That's what this is, mm -hmm. I would say, wouldn't you? Well, in the different variations of rhodochrysite that I've seen, some of the, it just depends. This is a little bit milkier, but then you get some specimens that are th that rich, rich, deep. Dark pink. Pink. Um, it almost looks a little bit like fuchsia. It's just, it's so different. It's so different how, uh, it's, once it's polished, the presentations. Like, if you could, if you could try to attach an emotion to what a strawberry milkshake is. There you go. That's all you have to know. That's See, this it. isn't very scientific. It doesn't have to be scientific, <laughs> you guys. Look at it and go, strawberry milkshake. Right. You got it. We can all relate to that. Hey, what's next? Okay, I'm gonna, I have to talk about this one. Yes. This is called These Shattuck so Heights. And that's what this is too. <clears throat> this is the same thing, just right? a very different look and talk that. about looking like you're flying in a plane over something right i just love the blue colors they're very vibrant very vibrant shade of blue um this is also called the stone of communication and i love this stone because first well, of all there we go blue again right exactly um and laura picked both of these out for me um and they obviously make me think of her when i pick them up um, and when I read about this particular stone, um, it is a strong psychic communication stone. 
So um, it strengthens everything about um, one's communication with the spirit world and your intuition and and all of those things. Um, it's it's a reconciliation stone and a stone mm. of renewal, which um, were that. new aspects of it that I didn't know until I did a little research prior to coming today. Um, but it also aids in channeling. Yes. So it's very it's a um, protective stone for the medium, um, and it helps protect against the lower vibration spirit as you're channeling and communicating. So it just encompasses so much of what you do. Um, the first time I saw Shadokite, and you know, we're talking about just your relationship with these stones, I just, I almost ran to the table mm -hmm. where this dealer, these are actually from Congo. They're from other parts of the world what, too, though. The first place it was ever discovered, I read, is in Arizona. Which is, does, right I wonder if, I've never seen any from Arizona. This was from this the Congo. Point. So maybe those mines are closed. Maybe from Arizona, so. but um, wow, yeah, that's from Congo. The first time I saw it, I just knew I loved it. It's amazing. And this is a little more rare, you guys, Shatakite. Mm -hmm. Again, throat chakra. Yep, amazing. Communication. Amazing. Um, okay, this one I have to pick up. I absolutely love. I love that one. Love orange calcite is what this one is called. That's like holding sunshine in your hand. It is. It <laughs> is. Am I? And it, this was um, part of my starter set that we talked about earlier when we first started today. And I absolutely love the stone. I meditate with this. Um, this is all about joy and vitality and um, sunshine. Motivation. It gives you that get up and go. It's passion. Um, it's just everything happy. And I just absolutely love it. This makes me feel good just holding it right now. It makes me excited. What is that good for? Um, creativity, yep. passion. Um, it's re-energizing. Um, it's good for your root chakra mm -hmm. energy. Um, joy. It's just a happy stone. Um, so whenever I want to feel more grounded and with gratitude, um, and thankfulness and the abundance in my life, this is just something that I absolutely have to go and pick up. It's so beautiful. Now it that is, is very, that's this not is very, very common. rare. It's more common. Right. Yeah. More of the calcites are. Okay. Yeah. And you can get it not polished, like in a big chunk too. Right. Yeah. Those right. are really cool. This is a favorite for sure. This is uh, found mostly in Brazil and Peru. Okay. Mm -hmm, among other places, but those are the two major ones. I love it. Yeah. Well, wow. I have a very weird stone to show you guys. And this looks very kind of boring when you first look at it, but when you hear the story about it, it's so not boring. It's a, kind of amazing. This is... Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> this is called Moldavite. And this is in its raw form, you guys. But this is... Um, can be carved or polished into a gemstone like quality it can be clear it's olive green and it looks like glass like you know when glass melts that's what this looks like mm -hmm. this is from a meteorite from it's incredible 50 million years ago i think is what i read this is only found in czechoslovakia one little city in czechoslovakia and it's strewn it, what happened is the meteor hit, and then these pieces flew up into the sky, and then they crystallized, and they fell back down into these fields in Czechoslovakia. In gemstone quality. Gemstone quality. That's incredible. So That's incredible. over the centuries, people have collected this. This is a very, obviously old, but humans have collected these for years and found them to be very magical and valuable. What were you telling me about the wedding stone? Earlier. Yes, this is a lot about, this is a soul stone, you guys. So this is a lot about your your infinite self, your soul self. Because it comes from the sky, it comes from like non-material or non-three dimensions is what people believe. It's like alien stone. But people <laughs> give this as, um, they make wedding rings into this. Because it's more about a soul connection or, you know, soul love. That's incredible. Isn't that amazing? That. And mm -hmm. it's green, nice. so there's your heart chakra again. Right. Yeah. This is really special. It's small but fierce. 
So Smoky Quartz again. Old, old Faithful. Old Faithful. I love that. I love that. This is such everyone should have some Smoky Quartz somewhere in their house as well as other places. Um, it's such a good grounding and protective stone, especially from negative energies that might come into your space. Yeah. Um, I just love, love, love how that makes me feel. And I do have small ones. Um, I know a nickname that you refer to Smoky Quartz as the Raid Rage Stone. Raid Rage. Raid Rage Stone, which I love. This is good for Raid Rage, <laughs> you guys. And I think it was Jamie said once, because we talked about this in one of our shows, that we were going to get little bags of this and throw it into people's cars if their that. window's down at the red lights when they're when they give you the finger and they cut you, you just off. Throw a little piece of smoky at them, <laughs> but we might get in trouble. We'll put an eye out, <laughs> which might cause more stress. Just maybe. Yeah, but this is beautiful. It really is. Yeah. It's great for people who have anger issues, <laughs> rage issues. I mean, seriously, this like. Well, and stress and fear down. and anxiety, it just kind of vacuums it up. It's just a really good, protective and calming comfort. I love comforting this. And stone. this one's so affordable. Um, this particular one is not, literally has rainbows in it. You guys, I mean, it sounds, hear me, like you can get really intimate with these stones. Like look at them and look at them in different lights and see things in them. They're just so beautiful. They really are. They change. Yeah. Some of them really change. And they change. But smoky quartz is really, again, it's affordable. It's found everywhere. Everywhere. Really. Mm -hmm. And it's just a, a wonderful thing to have in any collection, any home. Okay. Okay. That literally is the tiniest sampling <laughs> Minuscule. of our addiction that it's we so have. fun to talk about it's so it's fun, so to, talk fun about. to talk about and the next the next time for round two we'll have our headlamps our head maybe lamps. we'll delve into a little bit more of the science and geology oh behind it as we, we learn and go we are because that's what's coming next mineral nerds right and i'll tell you guys there are we're in atlanta georgia and there are at least two really fun mineral shows that come to Atlanta, Georgia. But we go every year. If you want to go to the mother load of all mineral shows, Tucson, Arizona, last week of January, first two weeks of February every year. Amazing. Amazing. Overwhelming in the best way. Like Amazing. football fields of stones, which we, of course, go. And the raw stones, the, raw the polished stones. Dealers. Jewelers, it's incredible from all different it's countries, incredible. all different types of stones. It's pretty amazing. Pure bliss, pure bliss. But we'll, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed this today. Let me know if you want to hear about other stones or if you want us to do this again because we've got so many more we can do. Would you come back? I would love to come back. It's Please so much do. fun. It's so much fun to talk about something you love so much. Please do. These it's were great. Thank hobby. you for bringing your other children that's right thank you for having me it was so fun it was really great we'll see you next time you guys <laughs>